branding and marketing mastermind, Tony Panici. You are in for a, a really big treat tonight. We've um, we've had some great numbers of uh, registrations and for obvious reasons, because you're in for a treat. Uh, for those of you who are joining one of our webinars for the first time, the format is that we bring in some of the industry's most trusted experts, and then we just spend an hour learning from them. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Throughout the course of 2023, our primary focus for this webinar has been to take our content from 2023 Nexus, which is OrthoFi's annual business meeting that is for everyone in the industry, and then we've converted those into one-hour learning sessions for and shared them with the entire industry. Tonight, we're departing from that a little bit, though. Um, Tony was not one of the speakers at our 2023 Nexus, but he will be um, speaking and actually doing a presentation um, with Lee and Panici on our main stage this year at Nexus. So we are super excited about that and about having Tony, you know, participate this year in Nexus and, and provide such great content. Now, um, OrthoFi has, has done a lot of webinars over the years, and we don't often focus on the marketing aspect. Um, there are a lot of areas that OrthoFi touches in a business, but most of those start after you've gotten the phone to ring and you know we kind of take it from there with the pre-patient forms and and a lot that OrthoFi does. Um, but we've just seen we, we're we're all watching the metrics and um, a lot of practices there uh, if you compare their same the, the growth to last year it's it's flat or even down. Um, our economy is scary right now and it, it's important that practices are thinking about what they're going to do to drive more patients. And so we want to make sure that we're bringing relevant information and things that are pra the practices that are joining us can use. Um, so tonight, again, you know, a little bit of a departure from the 2023 webinar series, but it is going to be packed full of fantastic information. So I'm going to get to the good stuff right now of introducing Tony. Um, as I mentioned, he is a branding and marketing mastermind, and his background is really multi multifaceted and it's pretty impressive. Um, his resume includes accolades as an award-winning fashion designer, a renowned high fashion photographer, a serial entrepreneur, and also a successful inventor. Wanted to just share some of these things with you because it just is fascinating to me. At the age of 16, which was in 2003, Tony um, demonstrated his innovation by inventing and patenting a DJ music mixing device. And then in 2011, uh, PDX30 named him one of the top entrepreneurs under the age of 30. By 2012, he further solidified his position in the fashion world by being named Fashion Designer of the Year by one of the most prestigious fashion do designer associations. 2014, once again, his innovation genius struck as he invented and patented the whiskey element, which um, led to the launch of a company called Tom and Oak. And so look it up, whiskey element. It's, it's, I have one, it's pretty cool. So you need to look that up. Um, beyond these ventures in fashion <laughs> innovation, Tony also serves as the founder and the executive director of PNW Survivor Games. And this is a more recent venture. And I've been watching this on Facebook with Tony. It's a, it's a really crazy, thrilling bushcraft survival competition and TV show. So you're, you know, this, what you're getting tonight, you're, you're going to be learning from a, a man that has lots of great experience at being creative, at being an entrepreneur, about selling, about a, a lot of fantastic things. Um, of course, he's successfully built and sold multiple companies, but most recently he's transitioned into a, a speaker, a captivating speaker, and also a charismatic consultant. Um, so he now works with uh, extensively throughout the U.S., helping businesses build their brands and then develop effective marketing strategies. So this diverse background really does enable him to bring a truly fresh and unique perspective to our industry. So 
um, I can't, I couldn't be any more happy or I couldn't be any happier than to bring Tony to you guys tonight to just learn from him, soak in um, the knowledge that he has. And Tony, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're excited to to spend some time with you. Obviously, the industry is too, because as I said, um, this is one of our, our uh, the registrations jumped really high for this one. So I know the industry is is craving what you have to teach us tonight. So welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to jump off and you're, you've are you got it. All right. I'll go ahead and share my screen. And we'll jump right into it. All righty. So um, we're going to be talking about some new innovative strategies that we've developed over the last couple of years. Um, I have the luxury of working with Panicha and Associates and having the opportunity to try different things with some of our more progressive clients that are fearless and willing to try something new. And so tonight we're gonna share those with you. So what we're gonna go through tonight is uh, the no questions asked budget, um, large scale experiments, and then creating emotional connections uh, in order to increase new patient exams and overall growth of your practice. So right from the start, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the no questions asked the budget, uh, which is really fun, actually. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite topics. Um, so for a couple of years now, I've been talking about uh, utilizing a brand deck. Uh, this is something that's pretty normal in the world of entrepreneurship. Um, you know, the brand deck is a usually a PDF format, and it's anywhere from 20 to, you know, 60 pages. Um, oftentimes, if you go to a bigger agency that's going to do your brand development and create your brand deck, you know, these can be anywhere from $20,000 to $50,000. Um, but I was able to use the templates um, from my previous companies and give them to uh, several of the web developers in our industry. Um, I actually gave our templates to Humanity, Neon Canvas, and Land of Yog, and was able to negotiate with them. This is about four or five years ago now. Um, I was able to negotiate with them to actually produce these for our clients um, for roughly $4,000. Uh, don't hold me to that. They could have changed their prices um, at any time, uh, which is you know justifiable. Uh, like I said, uh, these oftentimes are much, much more expensive. But if you don't have a brand deck, um, I highly recommend it. You know, it's going to have your logos, you know, the different variations of your logos. Uh, it's going to have your colors, your color codes, your typefaces, uh, your mission statements, uh, your brand values, all of that. And it's just really useful. Um, you can basically give the brand deck to a third party, like a web developer, or like maybe you hire a writer um, on Fiverr or somewhere, someone halfway across the world. And they can then take your brand deck and know exactly how to create content that looks and feels just like your brand um, and be consistent. So if you don't have one, I highly recommend it. These three companies offer them. Um, and I'm sure there's other companies out there now doing it. Like I said, we've, we've been pushing this for about uh, four or five years now. And if you're wondering if you really need one, what I highly recommend that you do is put everything on the table. So go, go to your office tomorrow and grab everything in the office that has your logo on it. Um, anything that you give out as D-band gifts or start gifts or deliveries, um, every piece of paper in the office uh, that has your logo on it that you give out, put it all on the table and look, are, you know, are the colors consistent? Are we using the logos correctly? Um, you know, is it identifiable and does it look like one cohesive brand? And if not, you might want to invest in a brand deck. Um, this office here um, is one of our favorite startups. They are incredibly explosive and growing incredibly fast. Um, but just 18 months in, uh, they were already, you know, you can see all the different shades of teal here. Uh, they're already veering off track because they didn't have a actual brand deck at the time. Um, and so I recommend, especially if you're starting out, you know, just get it right from the start. And so that way you don't go down that path. And then if you think about uh, rebranding or refreshing your logo um, and your brand, uh, that's something you should definitely do every few years. And as you do it, uh, keep in mind, this is normal. Um, so here's a couple of examples of big brands that do this or that have done this recently. Um, and just about every brand does it, including Nike. Even Nike changes that swoosh every couple of years. Uh, you may not notice because it's subtle, uh, but that's why we call it a refresh, not a rebrand. So here's a couple of examples of um, big companies that have refreshed their logos recently. 
So, I mean, as we all know with Starbucks, we can all recognize Starbucks from like five miles away just by the color of the awning that you can see. And so we want your brand and your office to be just as recognizable uh, from a distance, but that only works is if you're consistent. And then obviously you wanna refresh every couple of years so you don't look outdated. Um, here's an example of one that Humanity did for one of our clients, Urban Orthodontics. You can see the before and after. Um, you know, the after definitely looks more like urban orthodontics. These guys are in an urban area. Uh, it's, a, it's a diverse community, diverse office. And the original logo and original branding just didn't really uh, fit the brand experience. And so we did a, a full rebrand uh, for this office and it came out pretty spectacular. Uh, love these guys. So one of the problems that we've run into, and this is where a little bit of change and innovation comes into play, is... Your brand developers, you know, maybe maybe your brand developer is your web developer. Um, you know, they're all great. They're all very talented. They have talented designers, but sometimes you only get a handful of logos to choose from, and you're not really you're not really satisfied with any of them. And that's because you know your your project is being handed off to one or two designers. Uh, oftentimes, just one designer uh, handling your account specifically, and they're just coming up with a handful of ideas, and that's fine. That process is totally normal and traditional. But um, more ideas is definitely better. And there's resources out there to get more ideas. And uh, I like to leverage the no questions asked budget for this uh, because I believe that $200 actually goes a really long ways when you're trying to do something creative and try something different. So what I recommend uh, if you're going down this path is th there's different websites. One of them is 48hourslogo.com. Um, there's also a company called 99designs. And there's several others, but the way this works is for $199, um, you can put out a campaign, a project, and all these designers from around the world will, will try to win this competition. And, and you get tons and tons of designs um, from loads of designers. And so you have all these fresh perspectives, right? And some of them are gonna be perfect and some of them are gonna be totally left field. The interesting thing is any creative, any designer out there, they're all hearing the same information. You're it's like playing telephone, right? You say one thing and then by the time it goes through a few rounds, it's interpreted in a totally different way, but also everyone's imaginations are a little bit different. And so I like to actually go ahead and leverage lots of different creative minds, uh, lots of different designers and have, just have more to choose from. Um, so an example is um, here, you know, for the Pacific Northwest Survival Games, which we did just four months ago, um, this was actually supposed to be a backyard barbecue um, where we were just going to, you know, me and my friends were going to hang out and, and do some bushcraft survival challenges in the backyard and um, make some burgers. And I decided to make a logo for it because um, I thought it'd be fun. So I used this website and, you know, you first you start off with the brief. So you put out some instructions of what you're looking for, what you want to achieve, what the inspiration is. All these logos that you see here are inspiration uh, that I found online. And I'm like, okay, I, I kind of like some of these. And so you just put all that in there. And then all the designers from around the world are all going to read this brief and get a good idea of what you're looking for. And then start to design and compete against each other uh, to win your business, to win that $200. From there, we ended up getting um, 167 designs from 29 designers from around the world. And, and then from there, you you know, click on them, you add comments, tell them what to change, tweak this, tweak that, change that color, make this bigger, make that smaller. And then you finally select your finalist. And then from your finalist, then you select your winner. And then that winner gets that $200. Um, and now you have your logo. And then what you would do from there is hand that logo off to your web developers and tell them, this is the direction that I really want to go in. And now they have a better idea of what you're thinking. Because you got to remember, the designers that you're working with currently, whether they're your web developers or a brand manager, they can't read your mind. And sometimes you don't even know what you want. And so it's great to get all these fresh ideas and uh, have more to choose from. Um, with this logo, it was pretty funny. Just a little backstory is when we put this out, like I said, it's supposed to be a backyard barbecue. Um, we put it out, put out a Facebook invite and everybody thought it was something that had already been around for a long time. So this really just kind of showed the power of branding. Um, you know, we put it out there and it sort of went viral and, um, within 60 days, it went from a backyard barbecue to a reality show, uh, pilot. And, uh, we had 30 contestants. We did seven challenges over the course of two days. And we had four survival experts, um, that were pretty famous. Um, so we had Biko Wright from the show alone. He was the, uh, season eight runner up. 
He lasted 73 days out uh, in Canada all by himself. Um, we had uh, Dana Anderson, Wild Man Dan, and uh, he was also a, a finalist on uh, season 10 uh, for Alone. We have Peter Bauer, the founder and executive director of Rewild Portland, which is a major uh, survival school here in Portland. And then we have uh, Sharon Ross, AKA Afro Vivalist, uh, who was on Netflix um, uh, for a survival segment. And anyways, yeah, we got all these guys in 60 days, all because they saw the logo, they saw the branding that we put out and they just thought it was something really legit. And so as the momentum was happening, it was just my job to not let the momentum die. And uh, it snowballed within 60 days from backyard barbecue concept to full on production, huge events uh, with some amazing survival experts. Um, and so if you've ever wondered like how important is your logo, how important is your branding, this is a really good example here of what can happen. Uh, when you do it right, people take it seriously and think it's legit. Um, and here's some photos from the events. It was really, really fun. Uh, yeah, over the course of two days, they did seven challenges, um, like bow drill fires, dead ball traps, creating shelters, uh, water carry challenges, archery. Like it was awesome. It was really, you know, action packed and really, really fun. And we're definitely going to do it again. Um, and here's a little sample of what happened. A little sample of the footage. We're editing the pilot right now, and then we'll start shopping it around uh, to Netflix and Discovery and History. But just want to give you an idea of what we did. It's pretty cool. I know this has nothing to do with orthodontic marketing, but it's fun. So there you go. And shameless plug, if any of you are interested and you, you like this topic and you want to come join us in Portland and uh, do the survival games, we're going to do it again next year. So you can scan that QR code right there or go to pnwsurvivalgames.com and pre-register. So with the no questions asked budget, you can tell that $200 went a really, really long ways here where we went from backyard concept, spent $200 on, on a logo and branding, and then it blew up into, into something different, uh, something much bigger. Uh, because of the legitimacy of, of it. So what I want you to do is take the $200, uh, go to that website, create a campaign, let people compete. And then once you decide what you like, then take that logo, give it to your brand manager, and then let them create your brand deck from there. Um, it might, I, I warn you right now, it might irritate your web developer or brand manager uh, because they want to design it and they want to be in charge of it. But tell them to get over it. You know, it's more fun. It's, it's just better if you have more ideas and more inputs uh, to choose from. And then you can just hand that off to them. Um, and you'll probably be happier with the final product if you use this method. Um, and it's only 200 bucks. It's well worth it. Um, so along those lines, uh, let's say you're doing graphic design and you want to create a promotional flyer for, for a Christmas party coming up. Um, keep in mind your marketing coordinator that you have right now in your office, let's say you're paying them $28 an hour. It's going to take them at least an hour to use Canva and design something. Um, if not longer, because they have to also have to like, think of like all the words and the promotion and the expiration and all of that, it's going to be on there. And then beyond that, you have to do back and forth reviews with the doctor or other team members. You have to actually print uh, do test prints to make sure that it's actually, you know, within the margins and colors coming out right, the back and forth emails, the edits, all of that, right? It takes up time. And so now you're looking at anywhere from, in this situation, 84 to $112 for one flyer if you're using your in-house uh, employee to do this. Uh, what I would recommend is actually go to Fiverr and you might have to try a couple of different designers on Fiverr before you find one that you like. Uh, but most of our offices now have found somebody on Fiverr that they really like. And it's just cheaper. Like some of these designers, they're just fast and they're really good. They do this all day long. It's all they do. And so they're just more efficient. And so, you know, a flyer can now cost $15 and it looks really, really good. Some of these guys are so talented. Um, like all of these are about like, you know, 15 to $20 uh, to have them create that for you. So then all you have to do is figure out what are the words, what are the images that you want on there, and then just send it off to them and they'll they'll handle the designing. Um, so I highly recommend it. Um, really leverage, I highly recommend leveraging that $200 a month, no questions to ask budget, which means your marketing coordinators are allowed to spend $200 a month on whatever they feel is interesting or useful, or they just want to explore something and the doctor's not going to question their decisions. They're just going to allow them to use that money to uh, test different tools, try different technologies um, and go down the rabbit hole if they need to, to figure out if there's an opportunity here. 
Um, and if they fail and it doesn't work, uh, the doctor is not allowed to get mad. That's part of that budget. Um, they just have to understand that that's part of the creative process is being able to try different things without any resistance. With social media content, um, I do recommend um, smart comms. So we just found out about them about a year ago and we've been testing them for the last six months and we're really, really happy with this. Usually when you hire a company to do uh, social media content for you, it's just, it's like clip art, right? It sucks. It's just the same content that they're giving to a hundred different offices and and then they just put your logo on it and it's it just, it's not appealing. With this company though, it's really remarkable. Uh, they do fully custom designs. They'll use your logos, your colors, your words, everything that you want and, and design uh, three pieces of content per week for you. So that's 12 a month for $99. I don't know how they afford to do that. It doesn't make sense to me, but it's really good. Uh, so they'll submit the designs to you like this. And then you just go click on it and you tell them what you want to change, what you want to tweak. And then they'll make those adjustments. And then once you like something, then you hit approve um, after you leave your comments. Sorry. Uh, then they'll resubmit until you're happy with it. And then once you like it, um, then you hit approve. And then they have a built-in uh, posting uh, scheduler in here. So you pick, you know, I want this to go out on Instagram and I want to go out on Facebook on the 15th at 4 p.m. And it'll just post for you. And so you can basically do this, you know, once a week, you can review content, approve it, schedule it. And, you know, it takes 10 minutes. Um, and so it's so much more efficient when it comes to your, your branded content. You're, for social media, you're still going to do your D-band videos, your D-band photos, um, birthdays, you know, special moments, things like that. But if you want stuff that's designed because you're promoting your, um, let's say it's your patient appreciation party for Christmas coming up, you can have them go ahead and design those flyers and those type of uh, promotions for you. And for $99, it's absolutely worth it. Um, yeah, very, very impressed with this company. I highly recommend it. Um, here's the website link here. Um, like I said, you get three posts per week or 12 a month and then unlimited edits. And then you also get to use the scheduler. So I really want to encourage you to not be afraid of experiments and trying different things. Um, I've literally built my career on experiments and trying different things. And uh, don't be afraid of failure. It's part of the process. It's not a failure. It's just a learning opportunity. Um, and yeah, like I said, failure is part of, part of the process when, when you're innovating and trying something new. It's just how it works. If you're only doing what works 100% of the time, then you're not really innovating. You're not really trying anything new. And then the question is, are you standing out or are you just blending in with everybody else? But if you want to stand out and shine and get everyone's attention, you got to do something different. Uh, and at Panichi and Associates, um, we have a $500 a month, no questions asked budget. And it allows us to try different things. So again, thank you, Leanne, for giving us that and letting us try different things. Um, one of the early ones was Popple and using NFC chips. Um, so that little sensor that you see right there on someone's fingertip, that's called an NFC chip. And you can embed those into stickers, into cards, into all kinds of things. And it's kind of like a QR code, except it works more like Apple Pay. So what you do is you just tap your phone on it. And when you tap your phone on it, uh, it sends you to a link, um, like a website link, and it can go anywhere. Um, but it's not limited to that. It could do all kinds of cool things. Um, I actually wear the bracelet version on a daily basis, and I don't have to carry business cards anymore. So now when I run into somebody and I want to connect with them, I can go ahead and have them tap their phone on my bracelet. And then it pops up this profile that will have my social media links, LinkedIn, uh, email, phone number, everything I want it to have on there. But you can also have it linked to your, uh, within your profile on Popple, you can also have it linked to your uh, Google reviews. So it will be much, much easier for people to leave Google reviews. Um, I think this is actually a great tool for the TCs. So in the TC room, after the patient or parent uh, signs that contract and they're a little, you know, they're basically done um, and they're kind of, kind of overwhelmed from the last hour of discussing uh, treatments and money and payments, um, you can then say, you, you, you can then say, you know, we're, by the way, really active in the community and active on social media. Don't forget to follow us. And from there, just go ahead and take the card version, just tap it on their, uh, tap it on their phone. The, you know, your profile pops up 
and then they can go ahead and click one button and download all of your information to their phone. Super easy. Uh, they don't have to type in individual numbers and letters anymore uh, for your information. They can just click one button. Uh, but then also it's really easy for them to go ahead and click on Instagram, follow you, click on Facebook, like you. Um, it just makes everything more efficient. Um, the desktop display that you can see there, it's uh, $59.99. Uh, that's great to have at your front desk. And then the individual uh, cards, uh, you can just have those in the TC room. And then the doctor should also have one on him um, or her at all times. And then if you want to have people in the clinic wearing these, we have some offices that um, everyone in the office gets a bracelet and uh, they just wear it. And then as they're talking to patients, you know, if a conversation comes up, they can just go ahead and tap their phone on that bracelet. And it just makes uh, growing your following so much easier. Um, some of the other cool things you can do with this is if you get the sticker versions that are really, really cheap. I mean, these ones right here, these little sticker versions are 20, 26 cents a piece. Um, it's pretty sweet. You can actually program them to do all kinds of things. Um, people, you can have it linked to a payment system. You can have it linked to games. Uh, you can also have it linked to your Wi-Fi, which I really like. And if you want to have it, if you want to do that, you can just download one of these free apps. Um, it's called an NFC Writer app. And you can download one of them. There's a bunch of them and they're free. And then you can program it to your Wi-Fi. Um, and then now in the waiting area, people can just walk in, tap their phone on the sticker and connect to your Wi-Fi seamlessly. So much easier than trying to figure out what the password was and pass that along. It's a common problem that we see all the time. So I'm definitely getting all of our clients to start doing this as soon as possible, uh, just at least to connect the Wi-Fi just for the convenience purposes. But like I said, it's really cheap. The app is free. Um, you know, use that $200 a month, no question asked budget to try something like this. Um, another thing with this budget is uh, when I go when I go around the, around the country and I've been to almost 200 offices now over the last five years, I've noticed that like everyone, especially over the last year and a half, everyone has these Stanley cups. I don't get it. Apparently something went viral and now everybody has one. I'd be willing to bet at least 40% of the people watching this right now, I bet you all have these Stanley cups as well. And uh, they're expensive, right? They're anywhere from $38 to $55. Um, two weeks ago, I found out that somebody bought um, a, uh, a collector's version that was over $200. And it just blows my mind. But anyways, because it's popular, because it's really cool, we had some offices that wanted to give these out, wanted to buy these and give them out to patients. And they also wanted to give them out uh, as deliveries to referring offices. And I just thought that was crazy to spend that kind of money. So we did a little research. We looked on the bottom of it, uh, found, the, uh, found the manufacturing numbers, and we actually found the manufacturer. Uh, it turns out Stanley does not manufacture these cups. They're just putting their logo on someone else's cup, and you can do the same. Um, so we actually found the factory using Alibaba, and they're anywhere from $2 to $5 you know, rather than paying $45 for this thing with someone else's logo on it, you can just pay $2 or maybe $3, have your logo on it, order a hundred of them and give them out as gifts. Uh, it's pretty sweet. Um, and I'm not talking like it's a similar cup. I mean, it's the exact same cup from the factory that makes them for Stanley. So it's pretty sweet, um, not expensive. Uh, and again, if you're, if you're unsure about it, you know, order some and get the samples and test it for yourself. Um, again, this is part of the the testing process. You got to try different things. And this was one of them that we did recently and it's been a really big hit. Um, I don't know how long this trend is going to continue, but uh, if you're watching this right now, you might want to get on it right away before the trend ends or slows down. Um, so yeah, with this no course test budget, we've done all kinds of things. Uh, we've tested Popple, uh, the red paper plane mailers, which are like pop-up cube mailers, which are super cool. Uh, they're like 500 times more effective than a postcard mailer, um, according to their data. Um, we've done some unique popcorn bags with flossers. Uh, you know, we went down the sustainability route, um, tested whitening kits, all kinds of stuff, um, just by having this, this budget to try different things. Um, keep in mind, sometimes, you know, you might lose 20 bucks here or a hundred bucks there or 150 bucks here. And then collectively, you know, you've lost several hundred dollars. But then if you tap into something that all of a sudden generates $10,000 and generates hundreds of thousands of dollars, then obviously it was worth it. But you would have never found that if you didn't have the opportunity to try new things. Um, so you need to give your marketing team uh, that opportunity. Here's an example of a dumb purchase that I made. I don't even remember what I was thinking. I saw this online. I had some supposed genius idea for it. 
And by the time I'd arrived at the office, uh, I had completely forgotten what I was going to do with it. And Leanne did not get mad. Uh, she understood that I was trying something different and trying something progressive um, and a little weird maybe. Um, but when it did work out, she didn't get get mad it was actually just pretty funny and we actually all tried these and uh no they weren't bad at all it's actually kind of good it's actually just orange soda with a sticker on it so no big deal uh, but if you want to get the attention of the millennial parents out there you need to cut through the noise innovate try different things um and so doctors you know if there's any doctors watching this right now which i'm sure there are yes i am telling you right now you need to empower your marketing coordinators to be creative you need to give them this opportunity you cannot micromanage creativity um, you need to let them go down this path. And if they have to explain every single decision that they're trying to make, if they're trying to spend 20 bucks, they're trying to spend 50 bucks on an experiment, if they have to explain every detail, it's not going to work. You're just going to stifle the creativity and stifle the process. So give them that freedom, let them have just a little bit of money to try something different. Um, and they might surprise you, you know, trust them that they're trying to make the best decisions for, for you in the practice. Um, with one of our progressive offices, uh, they allowed us to test out a new referral card system that, that we developed in-house. And uh, we weren't sure if it was gonna work or not, um, but they were willing to, to, to give it a try. It cost uh, just under $5,000 to do this experiment. And it ended up within six months, it generated over uh, $532,000 for this office. Um, it was pretty remarkable. Um, but again, they had to take a risk. They had to be brave. They had to try new things. Uh, it was an innovation and it worked. Um, so uh, we're not ready to release it yet uh, publicly uh, because it's still in the beta phase. We still have to test it on a few more offices, but uh, so far so good. Um, yeah, like I said, you trust them. Um, as you do this, um, as you do these different experiments and, and you give that freedom to your marketing coordinators, I do highly, highly recommend that you give them a dedicated credit card. Oftentimes when I come into offices and we're auditing the marketing budgets, uh, the expenses from the previous year, uh, it turns out there's all kinds of weird things in there. Like you guys are, you don't know where to, you know, when, when you're in QuickBooks, like where do you, where do you put paper towels? Where do you put coffee for the break room? And things like that. They end up going into the marketing budget for some reason. And that's just kind of unfair to you and to the marketing coordinator. So I recommend give the marketing coordinator their own credit card. And then that way bookkeeping is so much easier. And, um, and, and then we can audit those marketing expenses later uh, much more effectively. Um, I also recommend that at least once a year, you get really aggressive with your marketing survey. You can just go to Google Forms and create a Google Form for free, hook it up to a QR code, and what I want you to do is add every single possible thing that you've done for marketing and branding um, over the last five years or so. Put it all in there and make it all multiple choice. Don't have any short answers. Everything should just be check boxes or yes or no. And, and figure out what's working, what's not working. Um, some of the things may not be working. And so therefore you should not be spending money on it anymore. But if you don't ask the question, you won't know. But the other side of it is that things might be working, but when you get that new patient phone call and you ask them, who can we thank for referring? They're not mentioning the thing that they saw that you did. Uh, they're saying, you know, the doctor referred them, even though they'd already seen you from something else. Or they said uh, they found you on Google. And again, they might have seen you five other places previously from your marketing, uh, but they didn't say it on the phone. And so therefore, you're not sure if it's working. Uh, we had a client just do this this year and they had done um, radio ads. I think it was like seven years ago. And anyways, we put the radio ads in, in this survey. Um, maybe it was a long shot just to see if anyone remembers the radio ads. And I believe it was over 30% of their patients actually remember the radio ads from, uh, from seven years ago. And they had stopped doing it because they didn't think it was working. And then now that, and then once we did the survey, it turns out it was working the whole time and they should have kept doing it. So I think they're actually going to do it again. Um, so anyways, highly recommend this. Uh, it's the only way to know if uh, what you're testing and experimenting with is actually uh, generating uh, real traction for you. All right, uh, large scale experiments. Um, so we're gonna do something a little interesting here. So if you wanna create an emotional tie to the community and really, really get into the community and get people talking about you, you need to create memorable experiences. But trying to design and create a memorable experience can be a little tricky. Um, for some people, other people, it's a little easier. And I've been fascinated with this concept for a while now, and I'm really starting to explore it. So 
Uh, we're going to do something fun here. Uh, so I want you to use your superpower to create a memorable experience, uh, which is your imagination. And there's different types of imaginations. There's a lot, actually. Um, some people are more visual. Um, they can do like 3D modeling in their head. Um, some people are more conceptual. Some people are more narrative. Um, some people, their imagination works more like a word document. Um, and I do notice the people that when their brain kind of works more like a word document, their, their recalls really fast. They, they, they tend to remember every word that you said on that date, you know, four or five years ago. And it just kind of blows my mind that they can remember all those details where somebody else um, that's more visual or more emotional, they remember the feeling or the concept of what was happening that day. They might be, maybe they read deeper into things, um, kind of reading between the lines rather than the individual lines. Um, and so there's advantages to all these different types of imaginations. And if, you know, within your office, you probably have a variety of these. Um, it is important to note though, that just because you have a, a more visual imagination um, or a more emotional imagination, uh, it's not mutually exclusive. Most people, they have a, a combination of these things and, uh, and, and they vary in different degrees. Uh, it's just some people though have more pronounced uh, imaginations in one area or another. Um, and that's ten, tends to be what we focus on. So I want you to work as a team and try to utilize the different imagination types in your office as you plan out memorable experiences, products, deliveries, things like that. Um, so that we can really understand if it's gonna work or not. So we're gonna do the imagination test. It's really fun. Uh, we're gonna use the honor system. And so this is on you. Um, if we were in a room, it, I would just have you all stand up and then sit down as we go through it. But um, we're just gonna use the honor system right now. So imagination test, can you see it? Can you feel it? Can you smell it? Can you experience it? So let's see, can you see it? What I want you to do is I want you to imagine, I want you to look at this right now. In your mind, can you move this object in your head? Can you spin it around? Can you take it apart and manipulate it, change the size of it, make, make changes to it? Can you see it all vividly in your head? Can you actually change the color and the texture of it in your head, like your 3D modeling, like a, like a, like a computer rendering system? Can you do all that? Um, I know my brother cannot. I thought that was, I found out about that just a couple of years ago. Um, he he like took apart several different desks actually to build a new desk that was terrible. And I asked him why the heck did he do that? And he said that he has to build things in order to see it if it's a good idea or not, because he can't actually visualize in three dimensional space, like in his head. Um, whereas I looked at it, I'm like, of course that wasn't going to work. Um, and I just thought that was kind of funny. And it really made me realize like not everybody's imagination works the same. Uh, so what I want to know is, can you do that? Can you change the color? Can you take change the texture? Can you manipulate it in three-dimensional space? Um, and if so, okay, you're still in the game. If not, don't worry. Uh, more than 50% of people uh, can't do this. Um, different imagination types. Next up, can you feel it? So I want you to imagine taking your hand and rubbing it through this dirty, oily sheep here, right? This sheep has probably like never been bathed. It's probably like oily and gross. It's all dusty. There's probably like sticks in its hair. I want you to imagine putting your fingers through it. Can you feel, not think of what it might be like. I mean, can you actually feel it? Is your imagination so vivid that you can touch it? Um, do your hands now, now that you're imagining that, do your hands actually feel dirty? Like legitimately, like your hand feels gross right now and you want to go wash them. Um, if so, good. Uh, go ahead and stay in the game. Next step, can you smell it? I want you to imagine taking one of these oranges in your hand, squeezing a little bit, so a little juice comes out, holding it up to your nose. Can your imagination allow you to smell it? And I don't mean remember what it smells like. I mean, can you actually smell it right now as though it's real, as though it's really in front of you? If so, good. Stay in the game. That orange, whenever I do that, my nose hairs like tingle. It's kind of weird. Um, okay, next up. Um, can you experience it? This one's crazy. So I want, you, I want you to be able to feel this. So imagine that you're in the desert, right? It is hot. I mean, we're talking like 130, 140 degrees. Um, it is just beating down hot. You know, imagine being in that metal shed and you're just sweating. You're wearing like a, a, a white t-shirt that's just drenched in the sweat now. It is so hot outside. Can you feel that heat on your skin right now? Are you starting to warm up? Are you starting to sweat a little bit? Um, you know, go outside right now and... And can you feel that sun on your forehead? Can you feel it on your nose? Can you feel it on your cheeks? Can you feel that burn? 
Um, are you starting to sweat a little bit? If so, if you can really feel the sun right now, good. You're still in the game. If not, don't worry. Most people can't. Um, but this is part uh, part of the game. So next up, just to have a little bit of fun, if you can't, you don't have to, but if you can, go ahead and take off your jacket, throw on a jacket, and then also roll up your sleeves so your arms are exposed. Now, we were just in that metal shed, right? It's hot, we're sweaty, and, and we can really, really feel the heat. Now, for no reason whatsoever, I want you to imagine that you're no longer, that shed is no longer in the desert, but now you are in the Arctic. It is freezing outside. It is negative 30 degrees. It is an absolute blizzard. I want you to imagine you're in that shed over there, out in the cold, and I want you to walk towards the door. Now imagine grabbing the door handle. It's a metal door handle. It's cold. Can you feel how cold the handle is? Now open it up, step outside, and allow that cold air to just rush in. Remember, you're just wearing that T-shirt that's covered in sweat right now. I want you to imagine that sweat going up your shirt, down your, you know, down your collar, down your spine that's all sweaty. Can you feel it? Can you actually feel that cold right now? Can you feel that cold like burning your skin almost? If so, good job. That means you have a lucid imagination. If you can do these things, it means you have a lucid imagination. People think about lucid dreaming all the time. I think what people forget is that there's a, a handful of people out there. It's about less than less than 5% of the population have a lucid imagination. They don't have to wait for the lucid dream. They can do this just sitting here awake with their eyes open and really feel things and imagine things and experience things um, in a very vivid sense. And to go a step further, if any of you got goosebumps, that's awesome. Because this is a kind of, you know, obviously I didn't have you meditate. I didn't have you focus for that long. I'm doing this pretty quick. Uh, but if you actually got goosebumps, and that actually means that you have a pronounced lucid imagination, which again is less than 5% of the population um, that have this. So I've been fascinated with this and it's so valuable because there's people in your office right now that probably have this and they may not even be part of the marketing team. Um, so asking you, all of you right now, like, do you think you have a lucid imagination? If so, are you part of the marketing team? And if you're not, you need to be, you are a valuable asset to your office right now and it's not being utilized. The next time somebody wants to plan out a delivery or an event or memorable experience, you need to be part of that discussion and help and like visualize it and try to experience what they're talking about and give feedback if it's a good idea or not, or look for potential uh, pitfalls that need to be addressed uh, before it happens. You have a superpower and there's probably a superpower in your office right now, probably someone on your team that, that you're not utilizing. Um, and it's a very, very valuable asset. And we can play this game with them if you want to, if you want me to do it with uh, some of your team members. Um, it is, and again, I just want to remind everyone that just because you can do this does not mean that this type of imagination is mutually exclusive. It doesn't mean that just because they're super visual and they have a lucid imagination doesn't mean that they're bad with numbers or, uh, they're bad at writing or anything like that. Um, usually there's, you know, they have, there's varying degrees of these different types of imaginations and the capabilities. Um, I also want to note that there are no weaknesses. Um, imagination types are not associated with intelligence or IQ or anything like that. Um, it's just different tools. That's all it is. So what I want you to do is work as a team, understand each person's strengths and use them accordingly. Uh, keep in mind if somebody is more linear thinking, um, then they should probably be part of that marketing team, but they should be in charge, in charge of the budget. You know, they should uh, probably be in charge of contracts and working with suppliers. If they're more visual, they should, they should definitely be uh, part of design. And if, they're, uh, if they have more of an emotional imagination, then they should definitely be part of planning out the experiences that you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to create a memorable experience for somebody, then if you have someone in the office that has more of an emotional imagination, you know, make them part of that part of that process. Um, to give you an example of how people have different imaginations, um, you know, not everyone has all the same tools. Uh, I thought this one was really funny. This is called the left hand, the left-handed cheeseburger or left-handed Whopper was an April Fool's joke that Burger King did back in 98. And I thought it was brilliant. What they did is they, they, they basically acknowledged that most people that go through the drive-through at Burger King are right-handed and they order the cheeseburger and the cheeseburger is the perfect snack while you're driving right and but it was kind of unfair to left-handed people and so what they did is they rotated all the ingredients on the cheeseburger 
180 degrees so that way a left-handed person can eat it more efficiently while they're driving and it was an april fool's joke but thousands of people across the country got got into the uh drive through asking for the left-handed cheeseburger not realizing it's an april fool's joke and obviously it's a circle so you rotate it 180 degrees that doesn't make any sense with a circle uh but that just really maybe you know it made it really makes it crystal clear that like not everyone has the same imagination. Somebody that's more, more you know, that can do that 3D modeling and more visual imaginations, they're not going to fall for this. But somebody that's more linear kind of thinks more of like a Word document style. Uh, it, it's, you know, it doesn't mean they're dumb. Um, it's just funny. It's just they, they couldn't visualize it and realize that that doesn't make any sense when we're talking about the circle. Um, so anyways, I thought that was great. So if you think you have a lucid imagination, I would actually love it right now if you would scan that QR code and go fill out the survey. I'm actually doing a research project on this right now. There is some research out there um, on this topic, but I am not satisfied with what I'm seeing and I wanna know more, I'm curious. And so anyways, I'd love it if you would scan that QR code, go fill out that survey um, after this webinar and uh, join me. And then we're probably also gonna put together a Facebook group and everybody with a lucid imagination will be invited to that Facebook group and we can all ask each other questions and collaborate on, on different ideas. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what we come up with. So deliveries, um, as we're planning these out, why do we do them? Um, well, we wanna remain top of mind. We wanna show the doctors that we appreciate them and keep in mind that doctors rarely refer exclusively. So, you know, there's usually a list of like three or four, maybe five uh, orthodontists that that they have that they're referring to. That obviously they have their favorites, um, but the question is, are you on that list? And this is why we do those deliveries. And you know, it's a real opportunity to build relationships. Uh, but if you're just delivering coffee and cookies all the time, over and over and over again, are you really building a relationship, or are you trying to buy them with coffee? Um, just something to think about. As you're doing these deliveries though, um, I really want you to track it in this format. Um, you can just use an Excel spreadsheet. And every month, you know, you need to write down how many referrals you got from that individual dentist um, or just doctor. And that way you can track the patterns. You know, is it going up? Is it going down? Oftentimes when I come into your offices and we, we look at this, uh, the doctor tells me that they already know who their top three referral sources are. And we run it and it turns out, oh, five months ago or six months ago, all of a sudden we saw a big drop from one of the doctors and they still play golf with them. They still hang out with them. Um, they didn't even realize that referrals were going down from that office. Uh, and you're not gonna know unless you actually track it like this. So you can actually see the patterns uh, in real time. As you do deliveries, uh, make sure that you're keeping track of everything that you did so you can go back later to see what was working, what wasn't working. So you need to write down the date, uh, the office, who delivered it, who did you talk to, um, and you know what did you deliver? And then what were some of the comments? You know, Did they say that the lady at the front desk say that Cheryl's pregnant, um, and like the hygienist, maybe, you know, maybe she's pregnant and she's doing like three months. Well, we should write that down. And then the next time we do a delivery, we should bring a baby gift for Cheryl and show them that we're listening and show them that we care. Um, but if you're not keeping notes, then, you know, it, it's a missed opportunity. Uh, we also recommend that you create a PCD card, a primary care doctor, and you want to know everything about this doctor. We want to know their spouse, their children, their names, the birthdays, you know, what are the, what does, what are their hobbies? What are the kids' hobbies? Do they, are the kids in sports? Uh, what school are the kids going to? And I know this seems crazy and it seems like a lot of information, but it really works. Um, because that, that way you can actually plan out individual deliveries. So maybe you're not going to do a unique delivery for 30 different offices, but maybe you pick like eight or 10 offices. And this year you're really targeting them and you're going to do some really custom deliveries based off of their interests and everything that you know about them. And then also with the staff, um, oftentimes the referrals aren't actually coming from the doctors themselves. They're coming from the staff members that work at those offices. So we need to know the names of every employee there. We want to know their title, their date of birth, how long they've been employed there, and then a couple of fun facts about them. And then maybe we can uh, do some custom deliveries for, the, for those individuals as well and win them over. Um, a big piece of that PCD card is actually uh, trying to figure out their love language, that doctor's love language or that staff member's love language, uh, because not everybody, um, not everybody likes gifts. You know, uh, if you haven't read this book, I highly re recommend that you read the book. If you haven't done the quiz, the quiz takes like five minutes. You can do it online for free. It's really fun. 
and it really teaches you something about yourself. Uh, but some people, their love language might be words of affirmation, might be physical touch, receiving gifts, quality time, or acts of service. Um, this one's actually mine right here. Um, so my primary one is um, words of affirmation and physical touch. So if I'm a dentist and you want to get my attention, you know, tell me that I'm pretty and give me a hug, right? Um, or you know, let's say let's say I am a dentist um, and you know, words of affirmation works for me. So um, what you could do is maybe you find out that I just finished a marathon. I raised all this money for breast cancer research. You could go on social media, do a post and talk about, um, you know, in something like, you know, congratulations, Tony, for finishing that marathon and raising all that money for breast cancer research. You're amazing. You're a hero. And that type of acknowledgement is really going to get my attention because I'm words of affirmation at 37%. But as you can see at the bottom there, um, receiving gifts is only 3% of my love language. So if I was a dentist and you're bringing me coffee and cookies and snacks all the time, I'm not going to do anything. I don't care. I mean, it's not that I don't care, but it's not going to tug on my heartstrings. And so you're probably not going to see a big increase of referrals coming from me, even though you're bringing me cookies on a regular basis and coffee on a regular basis. You got to try something different. So if you can figure out that professional's love language and then start to adapt your approach uh, and win them over, then you'll start to see an increase in new patient exams. Um, for one of our clients, we figured out that somebody's love language was actually plants. Obviously, you're not limited to just those five primary love languages, but um, somebody was a plant. We figured out that somebody was a plant mom. So we delivered uh, these little baby trees to that office and literally overnight referrals increased by 400% from that office. It was remarkable. So you know what we're doing moving forward every couple of months, they're getting another plant of some sort uh, because that's their love language. They don't need coffee. They don't need cookies. They need little baby trees and flowers and things like that. I'm sure some of you are plant moms as well and uh, or plant dads, so you get it. So I want you to experiment often. Uh, make sure you're analyzing the data, plan strategically, and then try something new. Uh, team photos, uh, I'm gonna skip this for the time's sake. Well, I'm not gonna skip it, I'll, real quick. For team photos, stop doing team photos like this um, because as soon as you do a team photo, usually like a month later, somebody leaves or you hire somebody new and you gotta do the whole team photo over again. What I recommend you do is uh, you do a composite team photo. Um, so what you do is you shoot everybody individually. So you have to find a really good photographer that uses studio lights. Don't use a photographer that, that uses natural light uh, because you can't really accomplish this uh, properly. Um, you need a really good photographer that uses studio lights and then you shoot everybody individually on a blown out white backdrop and then they're photoshopped together. And then now, uh, you know, that group photo that you see at the bottom there, those are all individuals photoshopped together. It looks legit, it looks awesome. And now if somebody leaves or quits or goes back to school, we just hit delete and they're gone. Uh, you just re-edit uh, that, that group photo. Or if you hire somebody new, you just send that one person off to the studio. They shoot them individually and they Photoshop them into your group photo. And it's just so much more efficient to do it this way. Stop doing the big group photo together. It doesn't make any sense. All right, emotional connection. Um, so one of the ways to create emotional connection um, is leveraging the Kids Club and, for your ops program. Um, this is really important because this is your piggy bank for the future. Uh, and keep in mind that the parents don't always want to come back every six to nine months because they don't really see the value in it. So what we can do is create a really good Kids Club program where the kids actually hold the parents accountable to make sure that they come back. Um, and so um, what, we're, what we've done is we've taken inspiration from the Girl Scouts. So in Girl Scouts, when they learn a new skill or do something for the community, we reward them uh, with a badge. And a badge is just like a physical acknowledgement um, of something that they've done and, and they're excited about it. And uh, if you've ever seen kids with Letterman's jackets or Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, um, or even karate, like kids love this stuff. You know, they want to grow, they want to improve, but they also want to be acknowledged. And so that's what we're doing here. So what we're doing now is we're doing collectible pins. Um, and these are, you know, they cost about 40, maybe 45 cents each um, if you order like 500 units at a time. And so they're not expensive. They're pretty darn cheap. Uh, and the way this works is when the kids come in for their first appointments, let's say they're seven years old or eight years old, we're going to give them a lanyard. We're going to give them their uh, plastic uh, membership card, put their name on it. And then probably their first pin is probably going to be like a tooth pin or like your logo pin or something like that. Um, again, it only costs like 40 or 45 cents per unit. Uh, 
not expensive. And then we're going to give him like a menu, like a postcard that has all the different, you know, maybe 12 different pins that they can earn for things that they can do outside the office. So let's say they, they, they finish a season of a new sport, uh, they get a pin. They learn a new musical instrument, they get a pin. If they, my favorite is actually, if they learn how to cook and they cook dinner for their parents, maybe they get a little chef's hat pin or something like that. But the idea is they can earn one new pin at every visit. Um, and so at the end of each visit, we, we ask them, you know, what are you, what are you going to work on for next time? There should always be, a, it's kind of like dating, right? You never finish a date without setting the next date. So you want to set a date for the future and you want to have them focused on a goal. And so you can ask them, what are they going to work on for next time? And now they have it in their mind that they're going to, uh, you know, they're going to go volunteer. They're going to learn a new sport or they're going to try to get straight A's on the report card. So that way, the next time they see you, they can earn that pin. And then when mom says, you know, in nine months, when they're supposed to come back from their OBS appointment, but they steal their baby teeth and the mom doesn't want to come back. Now, now when mom says, we're not going to that appointment, I want that kid to freak out on that mom and be like, mom, no, we have to go. We have to go see Dr. Paniche. I need my, my chef's hat pin. I made you dinner. I cooked you dinner. We're going, you know? And uh, it's just kind of fun. And there's always something to look forward to. And uh, obviously, you, you know, some of you probably are aware that Disney um, has a big collectible pin program. That's been very, very successful. Kids love that um that collectible pin program at disney so anyways pulling inspiration from that creating that emotional connection um and this is really going to reduce your attrition rate you put all this effort into marketing and branding and getting the word out kids are coming or parents are coming in with their seven-year-olds and their eight-year-olds you're putting them in your ops program and then they just slowly disappear because you keep wanting them to come back every six months or every nine months they don't want to come back because you know they look in their child's mouth they still have baby teeth they don't understand why they need to come back because uh, we're not maybe adding enough value to that appointment. And then once they disappear once, then they really kind of vanish because now they feel guilty for, for you know, ghosting you. Um, so anyways, this will help. Uh, the other thing is with those ops appointments, you know, measure their height, measure their grip strength, measure their shoe size, show that we're monitoring growth and development. So that way mom sees more value as well. Um, and then I think the last one is uh, showing the dentist that you're acknowledging them. Um, again, creating more emotional connections. This is a really, really easy one. Uh, and I know some of you have done thank you cards before where you have the patients thank their parents. This one's a different different version. Um, this one is directly to the, uh, to the dentist. And so what we do is at D-Band, we, um, the we tell the patients, um, you know, congratulations, Michelle, your smile looks amazing. Um, by the way, if it wasn't for Dr. Paniche, referring you to us, we would have never met you and you wouldn't have this beautiful smile today. So we'd love it if you'd go ahead and, and fill out this card and tell Dr. Paniche that you got your braces off today and tell him what you think about your smile. And now she's going to write something along the lines of, uh, uh, you know, dear Dr. Paniche, I got my braces off today. I love my new smile. Uh, thank you so much for referring me here. She's going to write that note. Then you, then you want to take a Polaroid. I actually recommend using a Polaroid printer. Um, so you take the photo on your phone use a Polaroid printer, it comes out perfect, rather than having to wait five minutes and shaking it to see if they blinked or not. It's just a perfect photo each time. Put that in there. And then you go deliver that to the dentist. And now the dentist is thinking like, wow, like I, I'm really sending my patients to the right place. If my patients are thanking me for sending them there, then I'm sending my patients to the right place. And now, now that dentist has more confidence in sending you more and you should see an increase in new patient exams. It's really, really simple, um, and it's very, very effective. And the other thing is that nobody throws away Polaroids. For whatever reason, nobody throws them away. They end up on your fridge, in a drawer, um, uh, hanging from a string, but nobody throws them away. And so they're going to collect those, and they're going to be thinking about you every time they see them. So again, in conclusion, um, I recommend that all of, all of your offices, you know, give your marketing coordinator a no-questions-asked budget of around $200. Try some large scale experiments, figure out who in the office has a different type of imagination, how you can leverage them and, and utilize them as a team. Um, and then try to create some emotional connections and that'll help um, increase new patient exams. Um, and it'll make you more memorable as well uh, within the community. So that's it. Um, don't forget to uh, follow us and tag us if you do any posts and give feedback. Um, yeah, make us proud. Thank you so much, Tony. So much fantastic information. And we have had a ton of questions. Um, we do usually in these right at nine Eastern time, but because we have so many questions, I do want to make sure that we get to those. So if you want to stick around for, for a minute with us, we'd love for you to, to stay with us as we ask these questions of Tony. 
Um, you know, one of the first things that I mentioned in the at the beginning of this webinar is that that we haven't done very many marketing webinars because you know OrthoFi kind of takes over at the point of the prepatient forms. Um, we're seeing with the economy that making sure you're attracting new patients and keeping patients happy is more important than ever. And so we felt this topic was so very relevant tonight. Um, of course, to, to make sure that your team has time to do this, um, you may need to be looking at outsourcing some other admin tasks in your practice. So OrthoFi, OrthoBank, has solutions for both of those things for, for outsourcing. So we would love to talk to your team about how we can take some of the admin burden off your off of your, your team so that you can focus on some of the great suggestions and ideas that Tony's given us tonight. So Tony, let's just jump right into these um, questions. So you start, you had the marketing survey in there and recommended that practices do that. Um, can you tell us what format you use for your surveys and then who are you sending those out to? Um, yeah, so you can create it on Google Forms. Like I said, it's free and um, you, you want to have the basics like first name, last name. Um, and then um, it should all be checkboxes. So multiple choice or yes or no. Um, otherwise, they won't fill it out. If a short answer just takes too long, it needs to be really quick and efficient. Um, and you hook it up to a QR code and then you print that out and you actually just have it in the office. So when the patients come in and they check in and they're waiting a couple minutes before you take them back to the clinic, that's when you ask them, you say, um, you know, all right, Michelle, you're, you're all checked in. Um, you can go ahead and have a seat. By the way, we have a game going on. Uh, if we get 30 people today to fill out this marketing survey, the doctor's going to buy all of us donuts tomorrow. Uh, can you help me out? Um, or something like that. Yeah. So it's it's a it's an internal game uh, that you do, and you just do it with your patients um, as they walk in the door. I recommend, you know, most people see patients every eight weeks or every ten weeks. So I would recommend do a internal game with your staff uh, for the course of eight weeks and try to have every single patient that walks in the door fill that out, and every single parent fill that out uh, over the course of eight weeks, and then you stop because you don't want to bug the same patients over and over again. Right. That have already I been love asked. That. Yeah, so not really an e-blast or anything like that. You're making it no, super no. personal and doing it as they're coming in the door. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so your lucid imagination uh, experiment and project is, was really interesting. And I think that you kind of covered this, but there were a couple questions around that. So, um, you know, there was the see and the feel and the smell and the experience. And so do you have to have kind of all four of those to be to have a lucid imagination or if you if a couple of those fit for you kind of a little bit more um, detail on how that that works yeah so i mean there's, there's varying degrees of it um so if you have at least a couple of them if you can i think the minimum is you have to at least be able to visualize really strongly like as though it's real as though you can like almost reach out and touch it um even even though you're awake you know you should be able to visualize it really intensely that's probably the the most important one, um, the ability to smell and feel things um, is kind of like a, a more a more pronounced version of it, uh, but I don't think it's actually required. So mm -hmm. I think if you have at least at least the visual element and at least one more of them, um, I think you would qualify as uh, having a lucid imagination. Okay, that's but uh, but but I I put those questions in, into the survey as well. So anybody that's curious about the topic, um, I recommend go fill it out and uh, join us as we kind of explore this together. Yeah, and we'll be sharing that link as well in our follow-up emails to the attendees so that if you missed it earlier, um, but that was pretty, some fascinating, interesting information. So we can learn a lot more about that with you as, as you learn. So that's awesome. Um, so we did have a question about gifts and it was, the question came in right before you went into your session about gifts, but, but this is, uh, so not as much about what you're giving, but so you've got dentists who are referring to you, but maybe you also are a pedo ortho practice. And so dentists are kind of afraid to refer to you because they're going, they, they think you're going to take their pedo patients. Um, so what is kind of the, are there some great rules around marketing to dentists when you also have a multi-specialty practice? Yeah, I think it's important to give the personal touch when you're referring to them. Uh, you know, if you want to receive, then you need to give as well. 
And you probably are, you probably are referring to some of the other dentists, but I wouldn't just leave it on the patient. I think in that situation, it's important to go the extra mile, actually pick up the phone and call that dentist. Like while the patient's right there in front of you, say, if you'd like, I, I can actually just go ahead and call over um, and, and take care of that for you. Get on the phone, call the dentist, and then hand it to the patient if you need to. Um, and then that way there's no mistake that you're supporting them. And so therefore they should be supporting you as well. Yeah, that's a fantastic idea. Um, the, you, you talked about love languages. And so, uh, how do you figure out other people's love languages if you're not like giving them a quiz? So how do you, how do you kind of get in there when you, when you're not just saying, Hey, take this test. So we actually have, so, okay. So the easy answer is stalk them. Uh, look, look at their Facebook, look at their Instagram and figure out what's going and just really analyze it based on the love languages. And so if they are responding to every single comment, like as though they're flattered, then words of affirmation is probably a signal there. Um, if they're responding to every single comment, if, um, if in their photos, they're always have their arm around somebody, like they seem to be touchy feely, then they're probably physical touch, right? Um, if they, I don't know, there's a few others, uh, but um, we actually did come up with a new system. Uh, we're actually, I don't know if I should say it though, because I don't have, we haven't done it yet. It's brand new, but we're about to do it. Uh, we're we're going to be leveraging Valentine's Day this year uh, with a bunch of our offices where we're basically calling over to all the dentists and saying, um, hey, this year we're doing something really unique um, for Valentine's Day, and you're actually going to get one of five different uh, gifts this year for Valentine's Day that we're really excited about, but it's dependent on the results um, of this quiz, and it's the love language quiz. So depending on, on what your primary love language is, that's what you're going to get. And so we, we're going to go ahead and email you this link right now. It takes five minutes. Please fill it out and send us a screenshot of the results. And then now they're just going to send you the results, and now you have it. But now you got to get creative. So, so yeah. if it's if it's physical touch, you know, you're probably gonna maybe give them a gift card to get a massage. If it's quality time, then maybe it's an invite to go to happy hour with them and spend some time together. If it's um, words of affirmation, you know, maybe do some sort of like public acknowledgement uh, that you support them. So like, we haven't tested this yet, but I think it's gonna be really fun to leverage Valentine's Day as the excuse to get them to actually fill out the legitimate quiz. It's gonna be fun, and it. I, I think the results will be fascinating. So that's awesome. And again, you know, I just, I just do want to keep pointing out like that does take time. So I hope that some of you who are sitting here saying, I don't know that I, we have time to take this on, on our, in our practice, look for great, great uh, companies like OrthoFi and OrthoBank that you can outsource some of the other stuff to and really spend time getting creative and creating memorable experiences for your referring practices, the, the referring practices and um, patients. Uh, so we loved your pins. Um, where do you get the pins? Alibaba. Alibaba. That uh, came too. And that's also where these came from, right? Because <laughs> yes, no, you I have one too. My Stanley. Yeah. <laughs> You're correct. I'm never without my Stanley. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I have uh, so no they, idea how that happened. Place. It must have been a TikTok or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how it, how it took off. Um, so I think we almost went through uh, the referral card system. So I think you said that you haven't quite released that out into the wild. So um, the referral card system. So talk to us about how if we want to, you know, get you to help us with some of these great ideas or when the referral card system comes around, how will you market that and how can people buy it or take advantage of it yeah so obviously like our, our, our private clients where we where we go we do in-office visits um and i can explain to them like this is brand new this is a beta program um you know like are you comfortable taking a risk and trying something different um that i cannot guarantee is going to actually generate results um you know th those are kind of tricky things and so um yeah, basically the only people that have access to it right now are our private clients. Um, also people that come to the Master of Marketing Academy that we do three times a year. Uh, we also share some of those more progressive um, and experimental uh, programs with with those students as well. Yeah. Um, but it would be irresponsible to just go ahead and take something that's brand new, it's only been tested a couple of times and just put it out into the wild and then it, and then it backfires or 
two people across the street from each other trying to do it at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a unique program. So yeah, when you, yeah. when you put something out in, into the public, you have to be just cautious and make sure that it's vetted. Right. Yeah, absolutely get that. And, um, you know, OrthoFi, we're, we're longtime fans of Panici and, and Associates. And um, I know we have many of our customers that that use your solutions and and consult with you, with Leanne, with the team. So uh, can't can't recommend you guys highly enough. And the things that you've shared tonight, I know that there are many practices that would just love to implement some of these things. So we will also um, share contact information for Panici and Associates as we share um, the recording for tonight and, um, you know, a few other things as we share out with the attendees and those who registered. So thank you to all who have joined us tonight. Thank you, Tony, for some fantastic information, things to try in our practices. And um, don't forget that uh, Tony and Lauren, if you don't mind uh, clicking the, putting the screens up, Tony will be at our uh, Nexus meeting, which is coming up in February. He'll be speaking. So um, you don't want to miss that. I don't know, Lauren, if you're there to show that slide with the QR code. And if not, just reach out to um, OrthoFire. You can go to our uh, Start More Smiles website. And uh, here we go. So uh First of all, any any practices you want to demo, we're gonna we're gonna give you a discount off your implementation. Um, so make sure you you reach out to us using that QR code. Um, but the next slide talks about Nexus, and we would love um, Lauren if you could go on to that next slide. <laughs> Maybe we don't have a Nexus slide tonight. Sorry about that. Um, so okay, anyway, we would love for everyone to join us at Nexus this year. Uh, Tony will be on the main stage giving us more fantastic advice. We have also um, lots of other uh, great presentations. There will be a doctor track. There will be a um, TC track. And then there will also be a financial track. And so any any um, kind of front office team and doctor could, could benefit from this uh, conference. So use this QR code today and you'll receive $75 off and get to hear Tony again. Uh, thanks again, Tony, for just some some great tools and tricks and information. And we look forward to hearing lots more from you in the future. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.